Now, the BitNet paper was released by Microsoft around October last year, and the main contribution of the paper was the introduction of BitLinear, which was a drop-in replacement for neural network linear layer. This enabled us to train one bit weights from scratch. There was then a follow-on paper, which said that all large language models are in 1.58 bits, and that paper converted every single parameter or weight of the large language model into a ternary one, which takes one of the values from the set, which is minus one, zero, and one. We now have an update to that. They have developed a set of kernels that support fast and lossless inference of this ternary bit B1.58 LLM on the CPU. So we should be able to run the large language model on the CPU. So that's what we are going to try today. We are going to run the inference on a MacBook Pro. So if we look at the GitHub repository, we can see that it's already received over 10,000 stars and it's already got over 600 folks. If we go under third party, there's a dependency on Llama CPP. So Whenever we clone the repository, we should be doing a recursive clone rather than just a simple GitHub clone. So let's get started. So let's start with cloning the repository. We need recursive because it's got Llama CPP inside it and it's a wrapper around Llama CPP. Because mine is a slightly different version of Git, I had to do recursive submodules instead of recursive and then I managed to download the code. So now I should be able to go into BitNet and I should be able to see all the code. Let's now create Create a conda environment within which we will be running the bitnet cpp I'm gonna say s now i'm going to activate the virtual environment so the virtual environment is now active if we do a ls we can see that this requirements file so we're going to install the requirements it's going to take a while because it's downloading pytorch and it's going to install pytorch and everything let's just wait for a second so the installation went through fine so the next step is to run one of the models i've chosen to run the hugging face model but we can also download the model and run it locally so if you're seeing any problem like this no such file or directory cmake then it means that you need to install cmake in your machine so i'm going to run brew install cmake in order to install cmake so now it's installing CMake and hopefully it should work fine. You can see that it's now compiling the code using CMake. So after installing CMake, I ran the setup environment and gave the hugging face model as the argument and it all went through fine. So it's downloaded the model, it's converted hugging face model to a GGF format and it has saved the model under models. So if we look at models, then we can see that the model is available under the models directory. And now we are all set to run it locally. So let's run the inference by saying Python run inference and then give the model as models bitnet large and we are going to give ggml model and let's do the i2s model and let's give the same prompt that they have given in their technical report let's see what the model comes up with it's churning out some statistics but eventually it comes up with the answer saying that the garden let's give it a slightly challenging question and ask the cliche question which is that how many r's are there in the word strawberries let's use the same model as the GGUF model, I2S model, and let's give the prompt as how many R's are there in strawberry, and let's give the prompt in such a way that it will come up with the answer straight away. We can see that it's churning out quite a few numbers and it's a bit confused. So let's switch to the bigger model and find out how it behaves. I'm going to be downloading the bigger model, which is the 100 billion parameter model. All that we have to do is go through the previous step of getting this hugging face model downloaded Locally. So I'm going to do that step now. So instead of the bitnet B158 large, I'm going to be downloading this model. Let's do that. So it's now completed the download and it has converted the model to GGUF format and it has saved it under models. So let's do the same exercise. Let's find out how it does with this model. It still says that there are a lot of us in the word strawberry it's actually the ninth most common letter in english language these facts are all fine but what is the answer to my question eventually it says there are nine occurrences of the letter r in the word strawberry which is wrong so i'm not sure what i'm doing wrong here 
So I asked the same question again with a capital S in the strawberry and it gave me a different answer which is that there are 10 R's in a strawberry and you can use our R calculator to verify the result which again is not too motivating but I can vouch for the inference speed. It's really fast for a model with this many parameters on a CPU. So that's quite impressive. This is the plot showing the comparison of BitNet CPP ternary model that they have introduced to the Llama CPP model. We can see that the inference speed is very high compared to Llama CPP right from 125 million parameter model all the way up to 100 billion parameter model. So even with the 100 billion parameter model that's run on the CPU, they are able to achieve human reading speed, which is this red line they've indicated here. On top of that, when it comes to energy costs, we can see that there's a significant reduction in the energy cost, which is at 55% and 70% when it comes to BitNet when compared to Llama CPP. So it could be a very good drop in replacement for Llama CPP. I hope that quick walkthrough of running BitNet CPP on your local machine was useful. Let me know in the comments how you are making use of BitNet CPP or Llama CPP in your work. We have many more hands-on videos coming up in the channel. So I will see you in one of those. Until then, I'm signing off. Bye.